Hello, just getting stuff ready. Um, and we'll start in a little while, let people get here because obviously we have to start from the beginning with everybody or else they won't know what's going on. So um, let me finish getting in some goodies. I had to get the all-important coffee. I might need tea later. <laughs> but it's chilly here tonight. Oh, I don't know why I feel chilly. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like it was cold all day. It was a beautiful fall day, you know, sun, blue skies. It was really pretty, but for some reason I feel cold now. Yeah, it's probably like in the 50s right now outside, but for some reason I feel cold. <laughs> hey, Lizzie, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, but it's supposed to be in the, um, well, last night it was 29, but it, it uh, it warmed up during the day, and tonight it's supposed to be supposed to get a freeze again tonight, and um, then it's supposed to be yucky tomorrow. It's supposed to rain and be chilly all day tomorrow. I hate that. Well, Lizzie, that's what most people are doing. Some people got their supplies. Others said, no, oh, I think I better just watch. So I think it's just going to be a watching party tonight. <laughs> make me make a fool out of myself all, all alone. Ooh, 27. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm he's working. Yeah, that's the way to do it. I do the same thing. Like, um, if I see a video that looks interesting that they're teaching something, I'll just watch the whole thing through. Then decide if I like it. Then go round up some stuff and uh, and go from there. Are these things getting hot? Don't want to touch them. <laughs> they better be. Oh, yeah, I can feel heat coming from them. One, not so much. The real Carla's here. <laughs> the other real Carla's here. Where's the fake Carla? She's the one that asked me to do this. Where is she?
<gasps> Have all of you already seen Jibbit's new video on and her journal? It's to die for. That girl, I tell you, she does such beautiful stuff. Yeah, exactly. She's missing. <laughs> Isn't she, Carla? I mean, oh my gosh. Did you see the one that went up today? Holy moly. Jibbit. J J B I D. Is that how you spell her name? Yeah, I think so. Or J I B E D. Oh, Ami corrected me. Uh oh, no. Now somebody else said it's G B I D. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. All the Carlas win. J B I D. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. I mean, but you try. You may not know, but you try. You get credit for that. I mean, I heard excuses. She's on the phone. Oh, dear. Yeah, she, uh, I mean, all her stuff's beautiful. But it just seems like each time she does something, she outdoes herself. So I shouldn't be surprised, really. We'll just hang out for a little bit. I mean, a lot of you guys got here right away. Let's hang out a tiny bit because um, I don't really want to repeat myself over and over as new ones come in. So we'll we'll give them a little bit time to get here. Oh yeah, Aaron's here. Quiet, everybody. Hey, Peggy's here too. What do you know? It looks like the whole kit and caboodle is going to be here. Cop smacked. Oh, yeah. But it was so cool because if you guys didn't see it, it looked like she had dug the the book out from the ground. It's so funny because I was just looking at, um, oh, where was I? Who knows where I was? You know, you go down a rabbit hole. But it had to do with my um, eco printing. And they, this one lady, it was really cool. I was going to try it. She got some tin cans that are rested, which I have. And then she got her paper and she got her leaves. And then, um, you know, she wrapped it all up and she literally put it in her compost pile and um, left it there for like about a week. And, you know, compost, as it's doing its thing, it naturally heats up. And so that heat was basically, you know, cooking the leaves for her and and doing the the printing and dyeing and then when she took it out it was so cool and i thought oh my goodness i could do that with all my pages for a journal stick it in there under the ground and ta -da! and then what do i see today <laughs> she didn't do that but it looked like she did that <laughs> it was beautiful Carla, what were you doing? Stepping on them? <laughs> I really got totally messed up with my harvesting because normally I would be getting all my leaves like right, you know, during this period of time. Because normally our weather is like 60 degrees um, through November on average. But about three weeks ago, it just, whoops, 
heating up. It just plummeted and we had freezing, freezing weather. I mean, like, you know, freezing. You know, all you guys up north, how it just came swooping down real early. And so what it did before my leaves could change color, they froze. So they just got brown. We got a wind a few days later and boom, they were all on the ground. So I did not get to get any of my autumn leaves with all those beautiful colors and all that stuff. I am so upset. <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Hi, Lynn. So, you know, what I normally do is I get all my leaves and everything. And then that's what I print with, you know, over the winter until springtime. I always get enough and I have plenty enough, you know, to fill my orders and stuff like that. So now, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh dear. So now I'm not going to have any fall colors or fall prints or anything. I've got a few. Remember, I was out there, you know, squirreling it around in my yard. But I mean, that's not going to last me, you know, through winter until spring. So, Hey, Louise. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, what's, what's his problem giving it to the trash man? Oh my goodness. Having my coffee in my Hawaiian mug. Can you see my Hawaiian mug? Makes me feel warm. <laughs> so anyway, the reason I mentioned that was because around this time, I would go over to um, Home Depot and in their parking lot, they had the ginkgo trees. And right now would be when I would go and get them. Well, they froze like two weeks ago and blew away the next day. So I won't get any this year. Ooh, white oak leaves. I have no idea. We have no white oak here that I know of, but I know oak prints really well. So the answer is yes. <laughs> The answer is yes. Just, just um, like get a pile and go like that and then put them in between newspaper, you know, just one piece on top and one piece on the bottom or in a paper bag and smush them. Or else they'll, um, they'll start to mold or they'll shrivel up and, It'll be crazy, but if you just flatten them, don't use any plastic. Don't put them in a plastic envelope when you mail them. Just, you know, like a manila envelope is perfect. Uh-oh, he's going to go shooting Bambies. I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want leaves from a burial ground of Bambies. <laughs> oh, he just heard me insult him about Bambi. I better shut up. <laughs> He's hunting rocks. <laughs> what to throw at Bambi? <laughs> oh. We just had a bunch of people around here complaining that there wasn't enough geese. There's a lot of geese hunting here. And because of the drought up north and in Canada, the area where the geese come from, there's less geese. I know that's not how you say geese in plural, but I forget how you say geeses. 
gooses. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> so they were complaining and I was going, yes. <laughs> One less goose to give its life. <laughs> Geese. Okay. Oh, I should have asked Aaron, of course. <laughs> Okay, geese. Geese is singular. Look at that geese. I thought it was look at that goose. <laughs> oh, it's both. Oh, what's a goose then? Just a female geese? <laughs> Come on, Aaron. Multiples are geese. Oh, you guys fight it out. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you a goose story while we wait for everyone to show up. We got, yeah, almost, I think everybody that said they were going to come is here. But I'm still going to share you a goose story. Okay, it won't take too long. A gaggle of geese is a group. Yes, that's okay. I've heard that. Now it rings a bell or a honk honk. <laughs> oh, Kathy's here. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you my goose story and then we'll start. My grandmother, um, I wouldn't consider her a vain person. Um, she only had little parts of her personality. That little bit of vanity came out. And one of them was that she did not want to be called a grandmother at all. And I was the, uh, the first grandchild. So obviously I was the one that was involved in what we're supposed to call my grandmother. So I started, call, I don't remember. It's been so long, obviously. I don't remember what I called her. I don't know if I called her grandma or whatever it was. I called her granny, something I called her. And, um, she took me to the side like I was some grown up and starts explaining to me how it makes her feel old and that she didn't like to be called that. And I'm thinking, oh, OK, <laughs> well, anyway, during that period of time, there was a new ladies. Some of you will remember there was a brand of potato chips out. I don't know. It was national, but on the West Coast, there was a brand of potato chips called Granny Goose Potato Chips. And so somehow I ended up saying, well, if I can't call you granny, I'm going to call you goose. And she says, that's OK. I like that better than granny. Until the day she died, I called her goose. And that is my goose story. <laughs> Didn't call a geese. I called a goose. That's what I was wondering there. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right, I think we probably should get started. Mm. And I even, to this day, when I speak of my grandmother, like to my mom, I don't refer to her as grandma or granny. I can't, I can't even, those words can't even come out in a relationship to her. I just say, well, you remember when Goose did this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my god well that's cuter than a goose yeah that's cute <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> okay let's get serious like i can get serious all right, for, for those of you that weren't with us when we were discussing supplies, I'll go over the supply. Uh, somebody try and find Darla. Seriously, because she's the one that was the one that wanted me to do this. Somebody go find her. <clears throat> because sometimes she doesn't get the notices. I know I don't hardly get anybody's notices, so. She's going to be upset if she doesn't get it firsthand. 
because I'm sure she's got questions. <laughs> Okay, she knows the supplies, so let's go over the supplies. Hold on a second. For some reason, something, oh, maybe it's the, never mind. My eye is watering really bad. I got a little exhaust fan. I haven't even done any of the soldering yet, and my eyes are stinging. Mm, maybe my hands still had stuff from my ego dying. I washed them. I don't know. Okay. All right, so one of the first things, obviously, when you're doing soldering is you need some solder. And um, I don't think anybody sells it with lead anymore, but they always say lead free on the solder. That leads me to believe that maybe there's some that isn't lead free. If they tell you it's lead free, maybe there's some that isn't, which seems kind of odd to me. But anyway, it's very important that... Um, it has on um, the information that it says that it's lead free. All right. All right. There's um, a different weights and I'm only using these because uh, I appropriated this from my husband's um, little garage and his stuff. He hasn't noticed it's gone yet. And so that's why it's, you know, that thick. And then Somewhere along the line, I got this one, which is very thin, but you can use you can use whatever you can find cheap or whatever you can find in your garage. All right. Um, you're going to need flux. Flux is what allows um, your um, metal uh, to connect with the other metal with the solder without the flux. It's as if, you know, as if you haven't even tried to solder something. So you have to have the flux. It comes in paste and it comes in a liquid. I've had this forever. It lasts forever and it's very inexpensive. I just get the paste because I can't spill it. <laughs> if it's in paste form, I am not going to spill it. Okay. Now, for the type of the stuff that we're doing, uh, specifically, I was asked to do this because they had seen some of these little pendants that I had made. Um, I did those with microscope slides. And um, I've done it both ways where I used the entire length of, of well, it's going to be hard to see, the entire length, can't see it at all, the entire length of the slide, which I don't have one right now, but it's in that one um, that one photo journal that I did that has that window with this that thing. Woo! You remember? You guys remember? That was the full length one, and then these are these cut in half, and then these are these cut in thirds. So if you're wanting to, you know, make something like this, this is the cheapest way to get your glass is these um, microscope slides. And I got mine through Amazon. I've had these a long time, too, but I know they they carry them. Um, and you need a glass cutter. These are very inexpensive. And this is what it looks like. Um, you can get this at any kind of a hardware store. You can get this stuff at any hardware store. The Flux, anywhere where they sell. They sell this. They sell this. Um, I like to get a lot of this, this kind of stuff, like at Harbor Tools, because it's very, it's even more inexpensive. You can get um, a soldering gun. Um, at Harbor Tools for as little as $6 sometimes. And for what you're going to be using it for, if this is the only thing you're going to use it for, you don't need a high temperature one. So one of those cheapies would be just fine. Okay. Um, you need any kind of little brush or I sometimes even use a Q-tip to apply the flux. You need something like that. If you have, even if you don't have respiratory problems, but specifically if you do, 
Uh, when you solder, it lets off a fume. You need to either have an exhaust fan on, a fan blowing things away from you. If you're in a area where you can open up your windows or if it's nice and warm, you can do it outdoors. Um, if you can't do any make sure you just have a little, um, some kind of a little mask on um, or a little fan next to you to blow things away. Um, and that's, you know, whether you have, you know, respiratory issues or not, but even uh, more so if you do, but you still need to be cautious either way. All right. So now also you need, you need the foil, the copper foil. And um, it comes in different widths. And for this glass that I use, what I've done, where's my little pieces, my little pieces part? So I already lost stuff. Uh-oh. Oh, here it is. What I normally do, this one is, let me see. This is a half inch that I have. And that's what it looks like. And for these, what I've done is I've cut these in half. And you just cut it with a pair of scissors. So I've cut this in half, and that's what I use to put around here. So you can see it goes a long way. Um, this larger piece, I used a full, a full size. So it just depends how thick the glass is that you're going to be using or whatever it is that you're going to be doing um, using the tape and the soldering for. And you need something to hold these little puppies with because it gets quite warm. And so you can't, you know, you can't solder here and then let it cool and then solder here. It gets, the glass gets pretty hot. So um, you need some kind of a little clip of some kind to hold that down with. Okay, have I forgot anything as far as tools? I guess not so far. All right, let me see if you have any guys any questions before I go any further. Yes, Harbor Freight. I always say Harbor Tools. Isn't it Harbor Tools Freight or Harbor Freight Tools? Something like that. I always give it the wrong name. So you can get a lot of this stuff there. Um, okay. Now, obviously, you need to have a surface that cannot catch on fire. <laughs> so this is the um, the tray that I use when I do my Ecodyne. So it's a mess. So it's, you know, it's part of my craft world. So I don't care what I do on that. So that's what I use when I do the soldering so that when some of the solder, because some of the solder is going to drip and it's extremely hot. So you don't want to do it on paper or anything over here to the side. Um, hold on. Let me move this over over here to the side. I have another, maybe you see it a little bit. I have another cookie sheet and this one I just got at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Um, go over there and get a couple of those to use because you don't want to be using your kitchen stuff. And then I have, let's see if you can see that. There's a tile right here. And I have the tile upside down. It's a ceramic tile. I have it upside down. And I have my soldering guns right there. Sitting on that. And then <clears throat> there also... I have a sponge that's specifically just for this type of project. It's wet because I need to be able to clean uh, the tip as we're going along. And then also I have a really, really wet, soggy uh, other piece of little towel in case I need it for any kind of emergency to <laughs> something lands on something where it's not supposed to and also uh, I can clean I can clean the soldering tip on that also so you need all that close to you um let me think what else I think that's it as far as the tools I'm sure I'm forgetting something 
Uh, you might want to wear, some people wear goggles, you know, the eye protection. Um, I don't wear goggles because for some reason it just makes me feel claustrophobic. And even though they're not covering my nose, I swear I can't breathe. So, <laughs> so I don't wear them. But if they don't bother you, it's not a bad idea to use that in case something by somehow just, you know, it isn't like it explodes or anything, but accidents are accidents and you're dealing with things that are extremely hot. All right. Um, all right. So then the next thing would be is you're going to decide basically what it is you're going to solder. In this case, we're going to make these little these little cutie patooties here. And I'm using the microscope slides. And like I said, um, I've cut these and um, in half. Now, because they're so obviously, you know, you can't see them. So it's hard for me to show you to cut them because you, you can't even see them. So I went ahead and did I? I thought I cut. Oh, yeah, I cut a few. But I'll try and show you how I cut it, even though you may, you probably aren't going to be able to see what I'm doing, <laughs> but it'll give you an idea. Now, for instance, when I'm doing the, oh, where's my other tile? I did it on, oh, where did I put that? One second. I think maybe I put it in the other, the other room. Hold on. Okay, when you're going to cut your glass, you want the surface, let me push this out of the way. You want the surface to be flat and hard. Can you go? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. So this is just, this tile I told you that I have over here to the side looks like this. It's just a ceramic tile. I have it upside down over there. These are tiles that I use also for my eco printing. So these are all my crafty stuff. Okay, so I know you can't see it, but here is the slide. Oh, you can see it better right there. Okay. So then what I did is I cut a piece of paper the exact size of the slide. Then I cut the piece of paper in half. Because it's really, like I said, it's really hard to even see what you're doing. Even me here, close up. And then um, I have to stand up to do this because I have to be able to see the top. So if I sound loud because I'm closer to the, oops, closer to the, to the, whoops. So line that up. Right there. It's very slippery. I think I'm going to mess it up. Anyway, you line that up. And you're going to see right here that tip. That's what's doing the cutting. And I don't know if you're really supposed to hold it this way or this way. But I feel comfortable doing it this way. It's probably the wrong way. So if someone says, that's the wrong way. You go, but that's what Rosemary said to do. <laughs> you go back a few times, and when it works, oh, it worked. See, this was the little things there is for you to hit that. So that's what you do. And you can cut them any size you want them. You can do them in thirds. You can do it in half. You know, whatever size you want it to be, that's how you do it. I'm not going to jinx that and try it the second time. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now you – oh, let me look up because I'm sure you – I'm not – let's see if you've got any questions Um, hi, Jennifer. Hey, 
Beth. Beth knows better what to do. That's why, if you notice, I put on there that it's my way. Because <laughs> I don't know how to do it the right way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beth is the pro. I don't care what the subject is. She knows how to do it. And if she doesn't know how to do it, she'll know how to do it tomorrow. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> okay. So, so now that, um, okay, so the next step would be, what are we going to use to solder on? Let me get these out of the way that are already done. Okay, so the, let's move this here, right over here for right now. Oh, what watt? That's you just asked, right? Okay, let me see. This one is, this one doesn't say on it, and I don't remember. I've had this one quite a while. And then the other one says 25 watt. I'm not sure what the other one is. The other one's a little more heavy duty. So it might be, does it say anywhere? If it says it's somewhere, it's too small for me to read it. So the smaller one is a 25 watt. The other one, I think it might be a little bit more. Okay, so here are some of some of the little glass ones that we played with. Let me get a napkin because I want to make sure my fingerprints are not in the inside of it. And then you're going to decide, if you're doing something like this, what you're going to put in the inside. I have a couple of dried flowers from the yard, so I think I'm going to put them in there. I normally would clean this with Windex, but I think I took the Windex in the car when I was cleaning the window and forgot to bring it back. I think it's in the garage. But this is good enough. It's going to be a mess before we're done anyway. <laughs> oh, I have, Beth. I love doing that. And I got some pretty cool tips that work really good on the fabrics. It's real pointy tips because it's really the tips are meant for wood. And so they work really cool on the fabric. I love it. Okay, so let me get my little flowers. Oh, how cute is that? Oh, I don't think anything else fits but that one. <laughs> smaller than I thought. I wanted to put one dark one in there. We'll have it down here on the bottom maybe. Maybe not. No, I don't like how that looks. Bah humbug. Well, I forgot to look at the other side. I think the other side has dark, so I'll be happy. Okay, never mind. The back side's cute, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let's just keep it simple. Put that in there. Because right now, the inside's not what's important. It's figuring out how we do the outside. Right, 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 right. Let's put that there. This 
This is nerve wracking showing you guys. Oh, that one's not. That one's from the other one. There we go. Wrong ones. Because see, when I do stuff, I don't really think. <laughs> this is making me think while I do it. And it's like, I'm second guessing myself. What am I supposed to do next? Remember, this is live. I can't like edit, you know, like, oops. Do that again, Rosemary. Okay. There we go. Aww. It almost looks like an orchid. Okay, so now, you know, you can get your fingers all over it because you can clean it later. The outside. See, it's it's... It might be too thick for me to do this. It's getting a little wonky wonky. Never know. Okay, let me see. Um, this might be the right. Mm, probably not. It'd be too too easy if that was. That would be way too easy if that was the right length. Nope. Nope. So let me cut this one. Oh, there you go. See, I need Beth here. I'm going to do this like three quarters. Instead of half. I want a little chunky around the sides. See, that's why you need a professional. Put a little piece of glue. Hello? Put a little piece of glue. That's what she said. Put a little piece of glue. It dries clear, you know. Hey, I don't want a big glob. Watch it. Okay, here we go. Well, that was a big glob. Oh, well. And where's my tweezers when I need them? Yeah, when you're doing this, don't forget. You need the tweezers. Very helpful. Okay, let that dry a little tiny bit. Tiny bit, tiny bit. Let's see what we want to put on another one. I've got a few of those cut, so we'll do more than one of these. That goes right there. And which ones go together? Did Darla ever show up? Crazy girl. Oh, there she is. Sorry. Ah! <laughs> I was telling everybody, go get Darla. What happened? She started this whole mess. <laughs> We haven't done anything, Darla. All we did was explain the uh, supplies for those that weren't here the last time we went over the supplies. Only thing we've done is we cut the uh, microscope slides. Um, let's see, what do we want to put on this one? I was wondering, I haven't... I haven't put a uh, 
I was thinking of a stamp maybe in there just to do something a little different. Maybe a stamp with a flower. Well, let me see. Let's let's well let's coordinate the stamp with the flowers. All I've got is those purples right now. I don't know if I want to put that with that. You never know. I might change. Ooh, even more purple. <gasps> Ooh. Let's see. That might be cute. Might be too much same same. Let's see. Let's see. Well, there's a flower. It's not purple, but Australia. I don't like it. I don't like it together. Okay. Let's keep on the hunt. We have to like what we're doing. Why bother? Ooh, pretty colors. Oh, too big, but a nice, nice, healthy looking bug. Okay, come on. There's got to be something. What's on here? It's got a little bird. A little birdie. Maybe I just need green and purple. I like green and purple. Hmm. Let's just go with the green and purple before we overthink all of this. <laughs> okay. Glue the puppy down. I want you to know it's been a while since I've done this. And when I say a while, I mean it. Man, I can't even see it. Okay, that'll be that one. That goes with that. Get some of that 
axis on. Not so heavy on the glue, you guys. Okay. Perfect. And I forget which is the right side, so I will clean this one up again. Okay, put the lid on the glue, Rosemary. Put the lid on the glue. All right, so this here is sticky tape. So we take off the backing. And I guess there's various techniques of how to put this on. It tends to want to curl up, which is irritating. And then what I do is I just put these two together and because this is, isn't flat, you want to try and hold it in the center so that whatever gap there is, you have it even on both sides instead of having a big gap here and then no gap there. I probably should have done a, a no gap uh, <laughs> for the first for the first one with no gaps, right? Of course, I had to make it difficult. Now it's now it's swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Okay, so try and get it in the center as much as possible. And then you guys all know about burnishing. Burnish, burnish, burnish. I have to hold it up so I can see. Sorry, guys. And some people say don't overlap it, you know, cut it right so it, it meets up. I don't really care because I like mine to look rustic and old and decrepit. So I don't really care. This isn't like fine jewelry or anything. Someone else would tell you, cut it so it creates a joint right there. I don't care. So if you don't care. <laughs> okay, so now, whatever you want to use, I just happen to have this here, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to burnish this down. that in brush that you can make these really nice concise corners or you can just be sloppy like me because again I don't care about that stuff but if you do it's real easy to you know, have a nice a nice corner there. Those of you that do, you know, your papers, you turn over on your journals, you know how to do all that little mitered look. So same, same. Flip it 
over, do both sides. Some people like less, um, less of the solder, you know, narrower, I should say. I like it kind of thick because I like it kind of chunky. And, you know, as you do it, you'll learn what look you like. Like, for instance, I cut the half and I cut like a third of it off uh, of the half. On some of these, I cut the half in half, but I liked it a little, a little bit chunkier. But um, whatever you guys like. Okay, I think that is pretty good there. I think, I think. Okay. Ta da! Can we see that? I'm so far away, but I have so many things you've got to be able to see, though. That's why I'm kind of far away. All right, let me see if there's any questions. Do I see any capitals? No, good. Okay. Um, okay. Don't look, I have any questions. Very good. Now it's time for the flux. Let me put that over here so I don't lose this. Whoops. All right. Why can't you move it? <laughs> oh, man. I saw a um, video today on this guy. It's called Yurt Living. Oh, I'm telling you. Super cool. Cool stuff. All right. So to not make more of a mess than I'm going to make anyway... Because this stuff is, um, it feels like Vaseline. It's kind of sticky. So I'm just going to put the flux on the one side that I'm going to be working on right now. Just because I don't want it, you know, all over the place. So I usually put it in the front and the back so I don't forget. Because, you know, I don't forget. What I did, where I did it. Okay. And then you get your little whatever it is you're going to hold it with. In my case, I'm just going to use this little thingamajigger. All right. So now, here we go. Roach clip. <laughs> the flux capacitor. I love that movie. This is the one I don't know what the watt is. And you basically get a little dab. A little dab will do you. And you do your first round. And clean off your tip with the sponge. I don't know what the heck that is. Put your flux on over here. Make sure you go all the way over so it will be able to connect. So you don't have a gap. And maybe I should just go ahead and do that whole one side. Okay. 
And you'll know if you missed a spot because the solder won't won't stick. It'll just fall right off. So no wonder, like, oh, did I miss something? You'll know. You'll know. See that little smoke? That's what you need your ventilation for. And if you have a glob you don't want, well, just go over it. Clean your tip. Give it a little second to cool down. It cools down really fast. And then we'll do that and. See, not as hard as you guys thought, right? It's still hot, but we can go ahead and put the clip over there. So see when the mystery is gone from things, it's not really a big deal. I mean, I found that to be true about most things. Again, if you got a glob, just go over it again, smooth everything out. Wipe off your tip. And ladies, there you go. No, it doesn't mar it because it's already hard. It's hot, but it's hard. All right. So now that you guys are pros, let's let's try and tackle this one. What about the loop? I've got the, uh, I was looking for some of some to work with. Um, I found, I found some, I thought I had others. How long was that other one? Oh, what did I do? How long was that? We'll get to that. I'm just letting that cool down before we go any further but well, we'll get to it because I have a whole little package of jump rings and I couldn't find them in all my mess so I'll have to make something up we'll do it hope it works <laughs> And we'll hope it works. Now I cut this one in half. So let's see. It'll be a little narrower than that one. Try and get it in the center again, and again, it's a wonky one. 
If you can do the wonky ones, you can do anything. And you can leave this down and roll it, but I don't know. I just like to do it this way. A lot of people will leave it there. You just kind of roll it around. You just do what makes you feel comfortable. There's no right way for everybody. That's why I say it's my way. <laughs> Because sometimes the right way to do something, you're not always comfortable doing it that way. All right, then I'll cut this. And then we do the burnishing again. It's a chopstick. <laughs> it, was, it was from my lunch from the other day. <laughs> I said, use what you got. When I say I'm a recycler, I mean it. See, that was wonky. Look, I didn't put that on straight. Cute. Now what do we do next? Blocks. I'm going to go ahead and put it on three sides. What the heck? Okay. And if you get these pointy spots, just flatten them down with the 
with the tip. Okay, clean the tip on your sponge. Get as much as that solder off as you can. Okay, cool that off a little bit so I can get the other end. With the solder, overlap a little bit, which you've already done. Wow, this is about as wonky as you can get. I'll show you what I did wrong. Clean the tip. See the little balls of solder that comes up? You're getting the buildup off of there. Okay. Da, 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 da. Now I'm going to get it. I hope you can see it. Oh, uh, yeah. See how that's not flat right there? When I burnished it, I didn't burnish it enough. It was still sticking up. So it's kind of popping up. From there, so that's why it's really important to burnish it properly. <laughs> I didn't do it enough on that corner, and so it kind of popped up. But for my, you know, my purposes and the way I want it to look, I don't care. Like I say, I want mine to look old and grungy. But if you like your stuff to be you know, a little more refined, make sure that you have that all the way down. Okay, now, um. Someone might recognize this. <laughs> Johnny. <sighs> Can you use that soldery stuff to stick two pieces of lightweight metal together? It depends what kind of metal it is. And how you're going to go about putting it together. If you're just talking like, you know, two pieces of paper put together. No, that won't work. But if you're going to like lap it over and then put some of this tape, you can. <laughs> okay, now how this would look pretty cool. This is the flat side. This is okay. I'm going to put a full piece of this around the edge. And then what will look really, really nice on this is afterwards... From the back, then you could glue a picture or you could decoupage something. Um, we'll do it. I'm not sure. I haven't done it yet. But I'm thinking it would look pretty cool. So let's see how much I need for this. And again, try and get it in the middle as much as possible. Oops, that's very crooked. I'm usually standing right above it and doing it from the side. It's kind of weird. There we go. 
Uh oh, let's see if that doesn't cover up the hole. I don't think so, but I hope not. No, it won't. All right, let's burnish this correctly this time. Watch those corners. And after you've got them down good, make sure you burnish them good so it's laying flat. You might need something better than a chopstick. <laughs> I don't know why, but you might. So really concentrate on those on those corners. Okay. Ooh, these things are heavy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hope this holds it. Everything good so far? Clear as mud? Whoa. See, I almost lost it. They have this little, uh, I forget what it's called. It's a little thing. It's not expensive. That it's like a little stand and you can clip this onto a stand. Something heavy like this, that would be ideal. I don't have one though.
because you don't want that falling on your hand when it's like molten. <laughs> you the twirly twirl and it ends up burning your hand. You, not good. That is not good. Okay, clean the tip. And if your sponge, you know, dries out, just go out and rinse it, put some more water on it. Overlap what you've soldered so it all connects. Okie dokie. Clean the tip. Okay. All righty. I think I need a drink of my coffee. Oh, it's it's iced coffee now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. So normally what you would do if you were going to use this like a pendant or something, you put a jump ring up here. Okay, so... The problem is, for some reason, I have a little a little box that has my little jump rings, and I couldn't find them. I did find these that I don't normally use with my jewelry so much. When I say jewelry, you know what I mean, this stuff. But we'll try it and see if I can get it, because it's kind of heavy, but it still looked pretty cool, I think. That would look pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, um... And we'll do that. We'll figure that one out. See if it works. Let's hope it does. Hope it's not too heavy because I have to, you know what I mean, maneuver it all. <laughs> okay, before we go any further, while well, I'm having my cold coffee, any questions? Hey, Suzanne.
a supply list? Well, I gave a verbal list and um, 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 and a show and tell at the beginning. I can do it again. Not a problem. It's not that much stuff. Of course, you need a soldering iron. You can go to Harbor, Harbor Freight Tools and you can get them super, super cheap. Or you can invest a little bit. Even a $18 one is really, really good. So it's not a lot, a lot of money. But you can get one as cheap as, you know, sometimes it's on sale for $4.98 at Harbor Freight. Okay, so you need that. You need um, some kind of solder. I just happen to have these. You don't have to get this exact weight. But just make sure that it's lead free. You need that. You need the flux. It comes in either a paste like this or liquid, and it lasts a long, long time. You need some kind of an applicator for the flux. It can be a little brush, or it can. I use sometimes a Q-tip. You need something to hold your whatever it is you're soldering. If it's something small, you need something like this. If you're doing something bigger, well, you're going to have to get like some, you know, pliers or something, something to use. Um, if you're going to be using smaller pieces of glass, you need to get yourself a little glass cutter. I think you can get these like for $2 at the Harbor Freight. Um, if you're going to want to use these smaller pieces like that, these are your microscope slides. You can get these on Amazon. Um, then you're going to need your um your what you call it, your tape <laughs> your foil that's what it's called your copper foil tape um i get the half inch because um sometimes i have chunky pieces and then i can cut it if i'm going to do a little more narrower ones so i can get more bang for my buck just buying one size uh, you need a high-tech burnisher. <laughs> you need a cookie sheet to put all your stuff on so that you don't start a fire in your studio. And make sure you have your something wet, sponges, towels, something to clean off your tip with. And then I have everything sitting on the back side of a ceramic tile sitting inside of another cookie sheet. So I'm kind of sort of fireproof <laughs> until it all falls on the floor. <laughs> I have wood floors here. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much as far as supplies are concerned. I think. I think. And then whatever it is, you know, you're going to be doing all this on. Now, I don't have a little tub here. The next thing, you know, you could wipe this off, clean it off a little bit, and buff it up. And there's others. There's polishes and stuff that you can get to really make this shine. I don't want it shiny. I like to make mine look grungy and dark. So I don't have any of that stuff. But um, I'm not sure what it's called. Solder cleaner or something like that. And it kind of cleans it and kind of buffs it all at the same time. Basically, all I do is try to get all that grungy flux off. Because like I said, it's a little bit like, feels like Vaseline. So you want to get that off. Again, the Windex would have worked, but alas, it's in the garage. It has a lot of flux on it. Yuck.
All right. So it's got most of that off of there. Oops, trash. And then another thing you can do that, that on are these uh, pebbles that you can get. I got these at the Dollar Tree. So you can get a whole bag of these and um, for a dollar. And that's what I made this with. And so they're, you know, they're all different shapes. And then with this one, all I did was I glued a picture in the back and um, and put the full the full piece. I didn't cut it in half, wrapped it around, and then looked around for you know junk jewelry that I had, and did the same process of just sitting that and putting some of the tape back there and putting the solder and. I think actually this one, I glued it down first because I wasn't, for some reason, it wasn't soldering down. So I glued it down and then I dribbled solder into it to make it stick. So that's that. And... I have this, I haven't done this, so I'm not even sure if this... I'm not sure if this is glass. I'm thinking that this is, maybe it is. It almost feels like plastic. I don't know how, I mean, I'm not going to try and cut myself to figure it out. <laughs> but I was thinking it'd be kind of cool to, that's supposed to go in there somehow. It came out. Anyway, um, how come it won't go back in? solder something on top of this, you know, on the side. Well, it was in there a second ago. Okay. Anyway, I guess it's telling me it doesn't want to be soldered. There's a little, a little tiny gap in there where it's supposed to go in. Oh, well. Enough of that. But anyway, these are fun, cheap to play around with. Um, and I gotta put it back in the package. Does it sound like plastic? It does, huh? Yeah, it does. Cause well, I don't know. Sounds the same. This is glass. No, it's different. Is it? More high pitched, right? Yeah, it sounds flat. Probably plastic. Real easy way to find out. I'm just trying to figure out how to get this back inside. Oh. Well, I got my hands all over it now. Not really. Feels about the same. As soon as I cut my finger with it, we'll know. Wow, why? This must not be perfectly circle, else it would go it would go in already. So it must be kind of wonky. Oh well, I could have wasted some more time on that. Anyway, I thought that would be fun to play with, but I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. A big time waster. And what else do I have? Oh, I have these. Which is almost the same size as these, but they're as thin as these. Or maybe a tiny bit thicker. They're a tiny bit thicker. That would be cool to see. Oh, we can't see, can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. A little bit. But I, it's pretty much the same sizes. Oh, no, it's a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger than this. But then, so I could wedge something in between there. Oh, 
No, I couldn't do that either. I'd have to cut it and be too much. I was going to say I could wedge it behind there and I could put something there, but never mind. Stop it, Rosemary. You're trying to cause problems for yourself. So, you know, look around. You don't have to like buy sheets of glass because it's hard to find glass this thin. So look around. This was old slide kit from Kodak. And I'm not sure how it worked, actually. I don't even know. What did they use the glass with the slides? I don't know. I guess in the old days they were wedged between glass when they when they did a slideshow. I don't know. I don't never heard of that before, but I guess it could be. Identification labels. I didn't even know that was in there. I have ephemera. Oh. 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 Look how cute. I didn't know that was there. Oh. I have cute stuff. <laughs> They look like seeds. They're so small. <laughs> I never looked back there in the back. Isn't that funny? I've had this like about for four years. <laughs> I got this where? I got this in a little shop in um, Hot Springs. Very cool. What else is in there? Maybe there's some money. No, it's just got more of that cardboard. And I don't know what, I don't know how these are used. Because this looks like what, 40s, 50s? See, it says 35 millimeter slides. I don't even, I don't even understand how they did that. Or maybe they were proofs, like when they did the large format stuff. I don't know. And what's this? This better not be something exciting. No, it's not. Okay. All right. Anyway. Okay, so enough of that. I just want to make sure all this was all cooled down. And now I'll try and put these a little thingamajiggers on and see what happens see if it works okay so in theory all you have to it's supposed to be really easy but i don't use these big clunky ones uh, i'm not sure how it's going to happen so basically what you do you have something to hold on to let me open up the flux So you put a little bit wherever it is you're wanting to add something to it. So in this case, it's going to be in the center. Now, how am I going to hold that big old fat thing? I don't know how I'm going to do this, guys. And then you put a little bit of flux on here. I'll figure it out. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Because usually it's a little small thing, and I can hold it down with this, but then this is going to, like, solder that together to that, right? Maybe if I do it laying down and just kind of tack it on there. Where'd my... I lost my brush. Oh, that. Ah. Make sure I have because I want to do it the first time. I don't want to. Don't want to have to do it again. Where is. Let's do this so we're not soldering. Soldering to my. To my cookie sheet. All righty. 
Let's see what happens. Whoops. Where'd that come from? I needed I need a little pointy one to get into there probably. Ooh. Nope, I didn't get it. Or did it? I heard some yummy sounds. I don't know. Ooh, there's going to be too much. It's going to drop here. Oh, I don't want that much. What am I going to do? I just need to get rid of it and start over. There you go. Clean it off. Clean the tip. Clean, clean, clean. Oh, it's not wanting to give me just a little bit. <sighs> okay. <laughs> this is what happens. Ow! Now that was hot. This thing is like super hot. Don't do that. Don't do that. Nope, this is not this is not happening for me. Well, maybe it is. Maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, I got it too hot and it, it melted it. Let's see. See, but it's just, it's, it's all crooked and it's a mess. Okay. But all you got to do is heat it up and move it. But when I do that, it's going to fall off again. See, I can't, I can't see from the side. I'm usually like right on top of everything. Well, it's not perfect, but it's on. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's on. I'm afraid to touch it my my break. Oh, that's hot, too, still. That's another thing I forgot. Usually, um, you know, if you're doing, um, you know, working on it and you don't have, like, lots of multiples, just have a little thing of uh, water, cool water, go, and it, it cools it down super fast. Anyway, so that gives you an idea but if you get that little arm i forget what it's what's it what is it called anyway it's it's a little gizmo i think it's like a jeweler's arm or some i don't remember what it's called it's not very expensive either um and it has like a heavy weight on the bottom and it has these configurations and it has these little clips that are already connected to it and it has two different ones so you can have one clipped here and then another one clipped holding that. So you're not even close to anything and everything's clipped. 
And you go, Psst, you know, and it's done. So I'm doing it the hard way. It's usually not this hard with the little smaller ones, but anyway, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Now with this one, with this one, we don't have to do a ring because we'll just put in something to hang from there from the hole. And... We could try another one and, and see how we can mess this, this one up. These are cool pieces. I haven't figured out what to do with those. I have plenty of those and they, when I drip. Let's try one more time, see how we can mess this one up. <laughs> Let's see how we can mess this one up. I sent you a picture of one rosemary. Rosemary, do you have styrofoam to stick? No, I don't. I don't. But I can put it on my list of things to get. Can you imagine with all the stuff I have in here? I don't have styrofoam. There's something wrong with that picture. I actually like the back better because it has some of the green. Now I'm soldering the part where the open is only because I'm not going to be opening it. But if you think you're going to be opening the jump ring, obviously do not solder the part that opens. Counterproductive. <laughs> Very counterproductive. And get this out while it's cold instead of grabbing it like I did when it was 100 degrees. Yeah, I think I need to buy my those little gizmos. Especially since they're cheap. You see, it would be it would be right side up and I wouldn't be having to get into this goofy Somehow that thing's actually stuck to it. I don't know how. But I can see it's just there by its chinny chin chin. I need to put another glob of stuff down there. See if I can see if I can get it to stick. Whoa. Oh, see, I need to clean this. Forgot to clean it. That doesn't help any. I wonder if I try my little pointy one. See, it's getting too much.
Hey, hey, I think it's stuck. A little warm. Yeah, I definitely need to get one of those things. Definitely. It'll make life a lot easier. You'll actually be able to do it. There's some things you need the tools for. All right. So. You got that one done. You got that one done. It's a little crooked. You got this one, <clears throat> that one done. Um, so what do you guys think? Enough, enough info for the beginning? Too much info? <laughs> Yep, Darla's ready to do it. Now, if you're like me and you like them aged a little bit, which I do, then you need to get yourself some of this. Don't get this unless, you know, you're really, really going to use it because this costs like about, I don't know, $11, $12. I mean, it will last you for a lifetime. Um, but, um, don't get it if you're not going to, you know, be aging all your stuff. I'll do it right now so you can see what it looks like. And you can see the difference and see which way you like it. And I basically put it on with a Q-tip. Does it stink? Mm. I know I stuck my whole nose in it. And if you're talking about this, no. And I just put some on a cap. And you'll see the difference really, really quickly. It just starts turning it black. Yeah, let's put this over here. Look. See how quickly it gives it the tarnished look? And that's why I say I don't need it to look perfect because I'm going to make it look old anyway. But if you were going to leave it shiny, you might want it a little neater job. <laughs> Whoops.
Okay. And so you can see the gigantic difference there. Oops. I don't have autofocus, so it's going to be blurry. Right. You can stop the patina. I like to keep it going <laughs> till it gets really, really raunchy looking. Decrepit. <sighs> I think that's it. Sounds like battery has <laughs> Yeah, it is. I'm not drinking it. I'm safe. So how many are you going to try it? Raise your hand. Lucy works a lot with metals. She knows a hundred times more than what I do. She etches it and does all kind of cool stuff. She should be teaching us. She should be doing a class for us. <laughs> I showed my husband the you know what need what I need to get the um the etching going. I said, Am I gonna jigawat myself with this? <laughs> he goes, No. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna jigawat myself. <laughs> Let's just go all the way. Let's do them all. I know that's how I like them. So I know some people like the shiny stuff. And I do sometimes. Oops, forgot. Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah, we've been playing. Oh, my goodness. We've been playing two hours already. And I still got people watching. Can't believe it. Well, maybe not seeing people. <laughs> so now I just got to get over my fear of fire and, and get a torch. <laughs>
All right. So who's going to try it besides Darla? Oh, Darla's already got a torch. I'm afraid of the torch, too. No creme brulee for me. <laughs> so, yeah, my husband goes, oh, that little bitty thing, that's not going to do nothing to you. I said, are you kidding? It's throwing flames. Flames are flames, no matter what size of thing it comes out of. <laughs> and then Vicki Ross came over and she brought her torch and we were doing our encaustic stuff. I'm going, holy moly. Because that is really cool when you're doing the encaustic, if you want to. If you're doing large things, you know, you need to torch it. The smaller ones, it's okay to use the, you know, the heat gun. But you're talking about big stuff. You don't want to be there all day. And then with this one, all I did is I put the full piece also on here. And just put it around. And did the same thing I did with this one. What? Darla, you are crazy. Yeah, that big old giant bottle. Yeah, forget that stuff. Did you join two? No, I didn't join two together. It's just, um, where'd it go? It's just the one. And I just, uh, I glued the paper to the back and then painted it um, silver to kind of match all this stuff. So this is paper, and then I glued this to that, and then uh, put a little piece of tape to solder it down, because um, I wasn't really too sure of what it was made of. It was just, anyway. And this too, I glued, this was an old earring. Well, this part was an old earring, and I glued that down, and then I put a piece of tape and soldered that down. And then I came back with the solution to make it to make it old. Any other questions that I didn't cover? <laughs> you guys are a bunch of wild women. I don't know, Kathleen. One time I was watching some live. And I had to keep looking over because my little green light kept turning off. It just kept stopping. You know, I don't know what it was doing. I didn't know if it was the person doing the live or it was, you know, my connection. But I had to keep refreshing that little, that little button like every five minutes. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> She's got it covered, boy. <laughs> She's got it all covered. And so then once you start doing stuff like this, then you can go and get like junk jewelry. You know, like I did here, just junk jewelry and start attaching it and making some cool stuff to put on your journals. I mean, I always think in terms of journals, you know. Um, but, you know, whatever, whatever you end up doing with it. Like this one. Oh, no, I antique this one, too. I just put some little beads on that and put some fabric. And this little piece of lace in there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. Little piece of lace I put in the middle. And then I fussy cut. I hate fussy cutting. I fussy cut this little bird and put him there. And I think he's kind of cute. And then, I don't know if I have it here. Um, oh, no, this is real similar. This just has little lace and little words and some flamingos there. I don't know if you can see that. And... This is an itty bitty one. Let me clean it. I think I got it dirty. Hold on. It looks a little smudgy. Now that one is, I have washi tape that has those little birds. So I put a strip of washi tape and then out of a piece of fabric that was green, I just took some strings out of the fabric and put it up here and put it down here. To make it look like maybe part of a tree or something. I don't know if you can even see that green stuff. But. Um, whoops. It's glaring too much. Oh, maybe right there a little bit. But that's just washi tape. And just to give you ideas, you know. This right here is um, a little piece of lace. And then. These are little peacock feathers from those napkins that all of us have. And this one has a little bit of, oops, too many oops is going on around here. This is a little piece of lace right here. And then this right here is just um, some um, scrapbook paper. What else do I have? I guess that's it. Oh, and this one. And this just has a piece of um, some kind of trim. It was like a little, looked like a flower. And then just put a little piece of fabric on there. And then I put a a jump ring on the bottom also and then just hung that from it. And if you guys haven't done the dom, it's an, it's an oldie but goodie. Some people, you know, haven't done all the oldie stuff. But doing the, I think it's so fun doing the dominoes. Have you guys done all the domino stuff? Like I say, it's an oldie. But I think they look so cute.
And then when you put little sparklies, this little girl, she's my favorite. I put little sparklies on her hat. And I think she looks so cute. <laughs> Those of you that haven't tried that, you should try it. It's fun. And easy. You know, that is easy. I know people say, oh, it's easy. Well, that is easy. No fooling. It's easy. Tell us. <laughs> We've been here two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> there are zillions of YouTube videos how to do it. But I will tell you in a nutshell, you get you get a domino. <laughs> you all know what a domino is. You get a domino. And let me get one out. You get a domino, right? One side is doesn't have all the holes. And I just paint them all black because I just like them black. No particular reason. I just like it that way. And then um, on, um, on Etsy, on Pinterest, all over the place, you can get downloads that have all these pictures already set up for dominoes. They're the exact size for a domino. And they have a whole collage sheet. And if you don't want to do that, you know, you can just cut something out that you have that, that fits, you know, the domino. And I literally just glue the domino down. And if you have any kind of sparkly stuff, like I, in her bouquet, I put some little sparklies. And what I use, I'll show you what I use. It's very cheap, 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 cheap. I don't buy, I never get anything expensive. Where are my sparkly stuff? I know it's around here somewhere. <clears throat> oh, here it is. There's two different brands that I get, but my favorite. Um, Deco Art has a bunch of these sparklies, right? They're called Twinkles, but they're a little, little too intense for me. They're like too, too, you know what I mean? Too, too, too much. But you get the folk art ones. They're very subtle. And it just leaves just a hint of the shine of the sparkly stuff, just a hint of it. And I really like these. So... If you like more subtle than, you know, in your face, folk art is the one that I would get to do that. And then to um, paint that on, I use the um, tip of a toothpick because I just I just want a tiny bit on there. And then after that's dry, then whatever stuff you like to use to make things glossy. Some people use glossy accents. Somebody use, some people use triple thick. Um, sometimes I just use, um, I have a little jar of varathane, the stuff that you put like on wood floors. Um, I'll use that. Whatever you want to use that you have, it makes things shiny. And then that's it. And then if whatever you're going to want to do with it, you can also put a little hole in there and put some kind of a little screw screw hook thing a jigger and then you can hang it off of things or you can you know whatever you end up doing with them there's all kinds of stuff you can do with them and um one time i showed you the little books that i made out of like do i have any more i don't think so i think they're gone my little book oh i have one left oh. and Maybe I better put this away before I really get in trouble. Okay. 
Ta-da! A domino book. <laughs> yeah, you can put a bale in the back, too. Yes, exactly. That's the easy way. Don't have to be drilling holes and everything. So here's a domino, one of those dominoes. Here's one in the back. And I took little pieces of my favorite shiny fabrics. I left it plain in the back. Sometimes I did the back and the front, but it was going to be um, too bulky because I put bulky stuff in the front. And then here on top, our little, whoops, little places for you to put little tags. Is that cute or what? <laughs> I think it has the cute factor. <laughs> wonga, wonga, wonga. See? So, you know, the books can be as simple or as elaborate as you like them. And these, you know, these were popular way before I even got into mixed media. So who knows how old this kind of this concept is because when I discovered it, the video was like, you know, six, seven years old. So who knows? <laughs> and this one, what I did is I sewed it just because I wanted it to have that older kind of look to it. But, you know, mo usually, you know, you just you just glue. Fold and, you know, fold it and that's about it. But oh, it's kind of cute. It's old school, for sure. When I discovered them, they were old, so they got to really be old. But everything is new again, right? There's new people coming in that don't know about that stuff, so it's kind of cool. So, yeah, just look it up. You, if you look it up on um, YouTube, there's hundreds of videos showing you how to make the little domino books. And you can get the domino collages and it the pictures are already that size to fit on your domino. And, you know, you think that I mean, they you do. I was going to say it's so small. You think oh, you can whip it up real quick. But, you know, if you put some real thought into making it interesting instead of just plain they take a little while too even though they're small <laughs> you would think oh how long can that take but it, it takes a little minute there to get that done do you pour the patina back or dump it I put the patina back in. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I do. It hasn't ruined it yet. I've had it for about a year. It hasn't done anything to it. Me putting it back in there. And it still comes out clear. You know, that blue color. It hasn't gotten foggy or milky or, or anything. I know they really do the tiny journals because I remember somebody asked me if I could make them one and I tried to because they thought they a lot of people think if you ask for something small that means it's going to cost less than the big one but in reality sometimes the small ones because it's more intricate and you've got to size everything down and you've got to be real delicate with it and everything. And it takes just as much time, if not more sometimes than a regular sized journal. So unless you've made journals, you don't really appreciate that. Okay. So last, uh, last um, call, any questions? 
about the soldering? Or is it as clear as mud? Once the mystery has gone, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, overcoming your, your fear of failure. You can't fail. As you saw, you know, if you get lumps and stuff, that thing's hot. You just come right back over it and smooth it out until you've got it the way you want it. And if you really messed it up, who cares? Who cares? Just try again. That's how you learn. I'm still, you know, messing up. So you saw that one I really messed up. That corner was lifting somewhere like this one. See, it's lifting. Now, I could bring the solder back in here. And while it's hot, you know, if I had something metal and pointy while it was hot, I could push it in and it would flatten it because it would be, you know, malleable. But I don't I don't care. It's OK. But my point is you could fix it. Even that can be fixed. So. Clear this swamp. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Louise. <laughs> so, so what? Uh, so, what do you guys want to learn next time we get together? If I know it, I may not know it. I'm not going to tell you what I know because, you know, I don't really know that much. I just, I, I just throw myself into stuff. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not ashamed to mess up. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Thanks, Kathleen. Well, I can't teach you eco dyeing because I, I sell a course for eco dyeing. So then it wouldn't be fair to the ones that paid for the course for me to um, um, to, you know, basically give away the course when they've already paid for the course. But I do have a video. It's about what two years old that gives you the real basics of eco dyeing. And I can explain that to you because I've got the video that I can explain. But, you know, if there's any questions that I didn't answer in that demonstration, I can't answer them because that's the more in-depth um, information that um, I've shared with them. But um, there's a lot of videos out there. Well, now there's videos out there. But um, with all the basic stuff. Snow globes. I don't do snow globes. Never have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Suzanne wants to know how I made that that um, that thing. I, she calls it tassel and sticks. There you go. See, I don't even know what to call them. But the stuff that I sold at the sale. Um, yeah, I can I can do that. Somebody asked me, yeah, somebody asked me to do the tassels besides you, Suzanne. Someone had asked me also. Now I already forgot who asked. And I can do that. And, um, yeah, I can do that. That's not a problem. I haven't, no, I haven't, Karen. I haven't deconstructed a watch. Although I have this, where is that? Hold on one second, guys. I have this piece that to me looks like a deconstructed watch.
this was uh, in some bag I got that had just junk stuff in it at the thrift store. It's not a real watch, but it's, you know, meant to look like one. It almost looks a little bit like a Tim Holtz one, but it looks maybe a little better quality. I don't know. I haven't seen his up close. But this almost looks like a real back to a watch. But this, it can't be real. Um, I think it's kind of cool. I wouldn't have to de deconstruct anything. <laughs> What could we put in there? Oh, holy moly. Hold on one second. Hold the phone, people. Okay. The squeamish need to, whoops, how do I open this? Oh dear. Let me try and open this down here so I don't lose everything. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh man, they're too big. Holy moly. Well, a legal fit. <laughs> oh, man, I thought I had a plan. Well, there went that plan. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, well, I tried. Here's my little bug cemetery. But they need a home. But, okay, well, it's not going to be there. I thought. So I, so I. Anyway, okay, next. <laughs> okay, then, so. Next week, we'll do the tassels. If you guys, um, if you have fabric, get scraps of fabric, get your scraps of fabric. If you have a store close to you that is getting rid of their Christmas stuff already, which Michael's right now is 50% off all their Christmas stuff. Um, see if you can find caps to ornaments. Let me show you in case it's not. What did I do with them? In case it's not registering what those things look like, and if you didn't buy my tassels, and why didn't you? Oh, let me go get some. I don't have any tassels to show you because they're all gone, but I will show you what you need to be looking for. These are the caps. When you buy them, they're like this. So when you go in the store, go where they have a little metal stuff for hanging ornaments. And they're going to come in a package. And they're going to look like that. Something like that. And then that goes over and that little wire thing comes out. And you got the bulb there. Okay, so they're all going to go on sale. And this is what I use. To make those tassels that some of you bought. And then I use the alcohol ink on them. But you don't have to. If you don't have the alcohol. Um, don't go out and buy it. Because we can mess with um, acrylic paint. And get the same look. So don't go spending money. Just go see if you can find these on clearance. I mean they're cheap enough if they're not on clearance. But you know me. I buy everything on clearance. So. 
um, this is a good time of year to get them. And then when the holidays are over, over, then they're like 90% off. So last year I went and they were all gone. Somebody, somebody got them. So anyway, so look for those. And then, um, uh, you're not allowed to drive to the store. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You've never seen these? Really? I don't even buy Christmas ornaments. Well, I guess I've only seen, the only reason I've, I know about these is because, like I said, I scour all of the 90% off, uh, <laughs> aisles after holidays and I just saw you know 90% off and it was shiny I had no idea what I was going to do with it I think I had them for two years before I got the flash <laughs> not the hot flash but then I go oh my gosh look look what I can do with these because I was playing with them and opening them up and saying there's got to be something I can do with these darn things I have a whole bunch and then I go oh dear and see, it's already got the two little holes. So when you wrap the wire around whatever you're going to create your tassel with, you just punch the holes, you know, punch the wire through those holes. And then you fold it right in the middle of where those wires are. And you are set to go. They've done all the work for you. So there. But anywhere that sells, you know, Christmassy stuff that has the bulbs. They sell the replacement ones of these. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness, Suzanne. Yeah, no, no, no. See, I think for a package of these... I don't remember how many were in a package. Quite a few. And they had three different sizes in a package. This might be uh, two packages, maybe, right here. And I got them for 99 cents. All right? So that's what I'm saying. And if you can't find these on sale, don't buy them. If they're that much, don't even buy them. We'll figure, we'll figure something else out what to do. But um, only if you find them on sale. Using that shiny tape. You mean, oh, what kind of tape? Bottle caps. There you go. Bottle caps would work. Um, what else? Patricia, are you talking about the metal tape, like the duct tape, that the metal tape? If you are, that would work. Because what you could do. I know. Hold on again. Again, don't go buy this because this costs like 12 bucks. But if you already have some from other projects, you could. Um, this this is tape. Uh metal tape you could put this on like real 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 thin cardboard or thick cardstock cut a circle and then um you know from there do the same thing that we're going to do with the other thing you're already starting off with a circle and you can do the little you know the little like what do you call it almost looks like petals right cut out like basically that kind of a shape you could do the same thing if you already have some of this if you don't well if you have silver paint you could paint like if you got cardstock and maybe doubled it and then painted it silver there's all kinds of ways to do it there's never one way Yeah, fire punch. There you go. Exactly. 
So I think what's fun, I mean, for me, I think what's fun is finding, like, for instance, okay, this is what we started off making it, and then find all kinds of ways to get the same look. I think that's fun. Because not everybody has access to the same stuff, and if you don't want to, you know, I don't encourage people to go buy new stuff just for one project, especially if these things are expensive, you know. But like all this, even though it's a lot of stuff, <coughs> a lot of stuff involved for this, um, <coughs> excuse me, it, um, most of the stuff you can get really, really cheap. You know, the only thing that really, you know, you're not going to find on sale or half price or a coupon or something is that stuff that does the patina on that. Otherwise, everything else, you know, you can find it relatively inexpensive. How big are, oh, how big are these? There's three different sizes. Let me see what size these are. The biggest one, the biggest one is one and three quarters from end to end when it's open. That's the biggest one, I think. Uh-oh, I like. That's the second biggest one. There's a bigger one. So this one's almost two inches. One and three quarters, two inches, and I think there's a baby one in here. Yeah, yeah. And then they have a baby one, and that one is about, that's an inch and a quarter. And I bet you there's one in between all of those. So it doesn't have to be any particular size. Like if you have a punch, it doesn't matter what size the punch is, really. So I guess you just have the three sizes. So two inches, one and three quarters, and one and a quarter. And, you know, you could even make them out of aluminum foil. You could glue the aluminum onto the cardstock. It would still work. If you have an embossing folder, you could emboss something on, you know, once you put it on the cardstock, um, you can run that through and um, come up with some kind of, you know, design. And it would still, you know, kind of, kind of sort of replicate this. And then when you fold it, yeah, there you go. Right. I see a Kathleen. I didn't look up exactly what Kathleen said. <laughs> a pie plate. There you go. Good idea. Oh, yeah. Louise said it, too. See, see, if I would look up, then I would, you know, know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, you could use bead caps, too. You don't have to have the big old giant um, tassel. I hope it doesn't hurt when you laugh, Suzanne. We're the wrong people to be around. <laughs> All right, ladies, are we ready to wrap it up? Any more questions? There you go, bead caps. Wood gauge wire. Okay, what I did, it doesn't, the answer is it doesn't matter. I had, and I can't remember where it came from. Like I said, I recycled everything. And where is that? Hmm. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't even know. My husband bought something. I don't even know what it was. I don't remember anymore. And all of these little thin things were wrapped all around it. And I just saved them. I mean, it's just so thin, it's ridiculous. And that's what I used on the tassels. But you can use anything, anything you want, as long as it's not too thick to go through your beads, whatever beads, you know, if you're going to use beads. Obviously, it's got to be thin enough to do that. But I would say anything. You can use anything. I'm telling you guys, I am the recycler. <laughs> hey, Lizzie's still here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you guys got your list. Yeah, bread tie wires, anything. Perfect. Oh, Suzanne sounds like she's got a stash of stuff. <laughs> I love it. You guys got everything. Alrighty then, scraps of scraps of, of fabric, scraps of um, you know, if you have different whatever you've got, really, if you have fibers, whatever you want to put in them. And uh, if you have beads, if you don't have beads, we can make the beads out of the scraps of fabric and make some fabric beads. That's what I did with those. And the other ones that were in there were um, paper beads um, that Jill sent me. I used those, some of those on there. So I think we're, we're set to go. You got your list. Oh, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> oh. All right, then. It is. We have been on. Oh, my gosh. We have been on two hours and 46 minutes and counting. Oh, yeah. Suzanne, you were asking about the fibers. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't remember what fibers I use on the tassels because I have a I have a, a bucket full of you know pieces of fibers and stuff and I just kind of pulled them out to go with the colors in the fabric I was using so I honestly don't know which one's in there uh, <laughs> you need my fibers well I got a bucket full <laughs> of different stuff there's this um there's this place uh, down the street for me I live real close to the old downtown of our town and there is this um, secondhand store, and they're always got some fibers there. And sometimes they're reasonable. Sometimes, you know, they're almost what you can get brand new for fifty percent off somewhere else. So um, I have to make sure, you know, when they got the good ones to grab them. And they usually have some pretty cool fibers there. So what I'll do next week. Um, I'll bring up my fiber thing and see if you can identify which ones. Or if you can take a picture of the tassel that you have of mine so I can see the fibers and then I'll know exactly which one it is. So, all oh, those were just examples. Oh. See, I'm so confused. I had so much stuff that I put together that I can't ever, you know, I don't even know if. Oh, let me put it this way. If Darla had not made the list for me that she made, I would still be filling out the orders trying to figure out <laughs> what was what. But she just spoon fed me. She just sent me the list and I filled them out. There you go, Kathy. It's a bucket. That's so I got this. Yeah, it's a plastic bucket. I throw them in there. <laughs> yeah. 
I've got the bucket. Here, I'll show you the bucket. Hold on. We're getting off at the three hour mark. Trust me. We got 10 minutes. Oops. <laughs> you thought I was kidding. There you go. Feast your eyes on that. I think I need to unplug my um before I do anything else. I gotta unplug these these hot things here. Because I'm messing around, and if I hit one of those and it falls on my foot, uh, it's not going to be pretty. Okay. Okay, yeah, so here's my, here's my plastic bucket. It's just full of junk, full of fibers. <laughs> And most of these I got, um, you know, some are nicely wound, some aren't. Some are have been parts of Happy Mail. Some of my Texas ladies brought me some. This stuff's from all over the place. Oh, this always looks pretty when I put it on stuff. See? And I haven't even, like, taken the top part off. <laughs> See? And look. The bucket's still full. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's why when you said... What about some of those fiber? I'm going, uh, I have no idea what fibers are in that you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know which ones I used. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But that's how I, that's the way I am. I need to be able to see my stuff. If I had, like, really neat you know, cabinetry with my stuff behind closed doors, I would probably never use anything that I have because I just, what I like to do, I tell him, I, I joke, I tell my husband, so I think I'm going to go shopping. He goes, what? I said, over next door in my studio. And I literally go from room to room and go shopping. Um, cause I have, you know, what I want to use. I just need to get inspired. So I'll go and I'll look, Oh, I like this piece of paper or, Oh, you know, I think I like this fabric. What can I do with that? And so I go shopping and I get a little, a little, um, box and I'll throw something in and throw that in and throw this in. And before you know it, I have my stuff that I'm going to be, um, playing with. That's how I did my, I don't even know what that is now. I lost my little cantha quilt that I'm working on. Where did it go? I have my whole little thing. Boy, that Sarah better not have stolen it yesterday. <laughs> my friend Sarah was here all day yesterday. And we went live for a while for you guys that didn't see us. Oh, my goodness. She's hysterical. She's, she is so funny. She was really... Um, low key yesterday she was be, she was being good and i'm looking here and i really can't find my cantha quilt and i really kind of started thinking maybe hey, sarah took it let me see she was eyeing it i know how she is oh here it is i better shut up so remember those of you that were at my sale you know i had that rusty rusty stuff and cantha quilts. And so I went shopping in my own place there. And I got a piece of that kind of rusty looking cantha quilt. And then I got a, my little quail that was a rust. And so then I put it down on some muslin. 
and filled in because uh, it was too far apart the stitching of the cantha quilt so i added two rows in between the long stitches i put some little narrower stitches and then put my little um quail on there and put a little few little flowers and there you go <laughs> i went shopping Yeah, see, you've got everything behind the cupboards. You got to open them up to get inspired. Uh oh, now we got the rescue technique. How to? Well, I have outside what I call a rusty garden and I get tin can anything that I find that's metal that has like an interesting shape or design to it I uh, I throw it out in this bucket and let it get wet and let everything get rusty and then once the rest is started, then I have a little fence there. I lean everything up against the fence and just let the nature take its course and make them more rusty. And then I was at a local um, farmer's market and there was a guy there who uh, he has a machine, sort of like a, a laser cut thing for metal. And um, it's all computerized and everything. And he scans a picture and he um, cuts metal, thick metal. And he had a bunch of cute designs. So I got some of his designs and one of them was a quail along with a few other things. And I just threw them out in my yard um, to, um, you know, rust. And then once everything's rusted, then I get my fabrics, whatever fabrics I choose to use. And you um, soak your fabric in uh, a solution of half water and half vinegar. And then you get your rusty pieces, whatever they are, and you lay them on your fabrics. And um, you make sure that everything is either weighted down because you need you need it to um, touch um, whatever isn't touching it's not going to print the rest isn't going to do anything so there has to be that contact and so either put something heavy on t once you've got your layers of whatever you're going to print with your rusty stuff put something heavy on top or um, bind it all up put it in a, um, I put it in a black trash bag and I do this during the summer months and you leave it out in the sun and it heats up, releases all of the rust and, um, and I leave it for maybe a full day if it's a really hot hot day, you know, hot time of the, of, the, of the summer, I leave it all day long, maybe two days. And then you open it up and voila, your rusty pieces have printed on to your cloth. Oh, Rosemary. Rosemary, you can give my address. Oh, to CJ? Sure, I can do that. Oh, Jennifer, what a bummer. Nope, autocorrect is good.
Yeah, start off with a rusty can. What you need to do right now, well, well, even now, even though it's winter time, um, you know, get some cans, get the lids, get um, a really good thing is these dollar, these dollar cookie sheets. Anything that you get at the dollar store is going to rust. <laughs> Trust me, if it's if it's metal, it's going to rust. Um, so go up and down those aisles in the kitchen section and say, okay, you know, what has a good design? You know, some of those spatulas, they're going to rust. Um, those pans that are supposed to be for, I don't know what they're supposed to be for, for pizza or cooling down cookies or something, but it's got a bunch of little holes. A lot of the ladies use them when they do their, their coffee, um, coffee staining of their papers for the design. Go rest those. Get all those things. Um, scratch them up a little bit with, um, you don't even have to, but it, it makes it quicker. Scratch them up a little bit with some um, sandpaper to expose it, you know, to the elements. Spray a little bit of vinegar on them and then just throw them out in the yard and leave them alone. And they're going to get rusty. So you need to get all your rust stuff going before you can print. So just go buy anything that is going to rust. Any cheap metal at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> No, aluminum doesn't rust, but I don't think Dollar Store sells anything made out of aluminum because everything I get has rust. These are perfect. These things, they rust so cool. The cookie sheets and that other thing, it rusts. I've got one. I've got one in the other room and they've got one that's supposed to be. Let me show you the shape. I don't even know what it's supposed to be, but it rusts pretty good. It must be out in my rest garden. I don't remember putting it out there, but it must be. It's not It's not over there by my eco-dying stuff. So it must be outside, and it's too freezing cold for me to get it. But um, it's a thing that – it's a weird kind of shape. It's, it's sort of like a little basket or something, but the bottom part's about this big, and then it comes up like this. It must be like maybe a steamer or something, and it's got holes, and, boy, that's that – Thing, rust. Um, for some reason, I'm thinking it's a basket. Maybe when you barbecue or something. I don't know, but um, I just flattened it out, and it rusted really good last year. I got it last year. So, but anyway, yeah, just just get a bunch of stuff, and um, it'll it'll rust. Trust me, I got a bunch of stuff out there that's all rusted. You know, your, um, you know, the cans that, you know, your, um, you're like, like what? Tomato sauce can, any kind of cans that you get, they rust. Sand them up a little bit, put a little bit of vinegar on them, throw them outside, and that's it. They're rusting. I've got this, um, how much time do we have? Oh, I went over. You guys didn't tell me. It's three minutes past and we're supposed to leave. Hold on. I swear, I just talked too much. Okay.
They have like this baling wire. You put that out there, that rusts. I don't think it's supposed to, but it does. Um, you get certain kind of nails. If they're not galvanized, they're going to rust. Screws, they're going to rust if they're not galvanized. Um, pretty much anything is going to rust. This stuff. This was um, some kind of stuff that was supposed to go on clothing. You know, it had these things that go in the clothing and you clamp them and it was supposed to look Western or something. They had And they were silver. They had them on clearance. I got them, put them in the vinegar, scrubbed them up a little bit, threw them outside, put some water in it. Rust. These were some little stupid little things for little kids. It was a little plastic thing. And I don't remember what they said, but it was, you know, for a little kid. But once you rest it, who knows? I had a little star on it. So you just got to look at what you have to do is look at everything at a different angle, different slant. If it's for one thing, we'll buy it for something else. Oh, this comes out beautiful. This is over where they they sell this over in the um like the floral department. In a I forget if it's Hobby Lobby or or Michaels. But anyway, it's like silver, silver, silver. Oops, see, it really crunched. That broke almost. I did the same thing with that. Threw it out there with some vinegar. Left it out. And look, rest heaven. I've used these on my journals. I just seal them up on the cover. Look how beautiful. Oops. So... There's a few things I've gotten that didn't rust, but hardly almost everything. And then these are just wires. Oh, oh, you get, um, what do you call that stuff? At the Dollar Tree, those, that stuff, I can't think of the word right now, that you scrub with. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway. It rusts and falls apart. And I sprinkle that when I do my Eco Dine to get some cool color with that. That's what all that stuff in there is. And what else? And don't forget chicken wire. It'll rust unless you buy it galvanized. So. the lid to a jar. So anyway, you just got to test it out. Everybody has different stuff around them. Everybody has stuff stockpiled of different stuff. Throw it outside, see what happens. If it doesn't rust, well, you know, bring it back in and use it what it was intended for. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, so this is what happens to the cans. You leave them outside. This went to uh, it's a tomato can. And then if we're going to use them for dyeing and stuff, you can open them up. Look at all that yumminess. Here's the bottom part of the one that opened up. So see, you just got to, you know, you just got to throw them out there and see what happens. There's a bottle cap. Here's the pop-up to a soda can. Those rest. And here's some of the 
cheap jewelry you findings you can buy and they rest. Oh, screw, they rest. There's some more lids. So see, let's go for it. I got some things here I haven't put out yet. I'll put those out. Maybe when we get some rain or something. See, you don't want to know all the junk I got. <laughs> Oh, and then my husband buys these big old sardine things for the dogs. So I have a bunch of these. So I just flattened one out. And look how cool. That's cool. And then this was an old tag of some kind. So, but be careful, you know, use, not like me, use gloves or something. You don't want to get tetanus. <laughs> you don't want to scratch yourself with these. You need to be careful, be, be wise, unlike me. That's enough of that, ladies. We're done. Oh, we are done. What are you going to do with that stuff? Are you talking to me, Aaron, or somebody else? You talking to me? I use that with my printing and my echo dyeing. I that's what I use when I, you know, dye my dye shapes on my fabrics and stuff. Or in my eco dyeing, I'll wrap um, stuff around the cans when I throw them in to do my my bundles. Um, all kinds of stuff. All right, ladies, thank you for sticking it out with me. I hope you try um, some soldering. If you do, please, you know, let me know. Send me a picture. Show all of us. And um, and maybe you can find the caps for um, the tassels. All right? And if not, improvise. I think improvising is, is more fun than finding the actual caps myself anyway. <laughs> okay, it was all Darla's fault. Thank you, Darla. Go get the torch out. See what you end up doing. Yes, all of you have a good Sunday. We're going to have awful weather tomorrow. So I'll be hopefully warm and dry out of the mess. Uh, where do you want us to send the photos? Um, oh, yeah. You know what? Darla. Darla's good at all this. Maybe we should. No, not everybody's on Facebook. So I was going to say maybe we should get an just an online Facebook. You know, the people that are always on the, you know, the lives. To share the stuff that we make and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. But I don't think everybody's there. That's the only problem. So, yeah, where do we do that? We'll make Darla figure that one out. She might have to make us a, um, oh, Darla, I have that website thing. But you have to put it together. Remember, you told me to save something and I saved it and I don't remember where it is. <laughs> it's a, it's. It's, it's going to be Darla's headache soon. Don't worry about it. We'll let you know. Info coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, she remembers I forgot already. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about when I don't know what I'm talking about. That's how smart Darla is. <laughs> All right, ladies, thanks again. And I'll see you guys when I see you guys. Have fun. Happy shopping <laughs> in your own place. All right. Good night. Thanks again.